Hi, everyone. Welcome. And we are live today on Wednesday. Uh, I seem to like um, coming on live on Wednesdays. I don't know why. Um, but um, yeah, so let me just turn off all these mics. So how's everyone doing? And um, anybody who wants to um, to type up their comments, you can, you're free to do so. I'm learning all this um, this um, technology right in front of me, and um, I am streaming via StreamYard um, that I'm using as an app so that I can go simultaneous between um, two YouTube accounts or two Facebook accounts and one YouTube. And um, so that I can reach as much as um, many um, audience as I can. And um, feel free to do so to um, comment and, um, you know, if you want to participate um, to our discussion. And um, so what I wanted to share today is um, about hustle. Okay, so many of us um, uh, like to do hustle. And um, what are those hustles? Those hustles are just kind of like maybe selling something on the side while you're um, working part time, or maybe um, you're um, um, what do you call this? A developer? Maybe you like doing apps. Maybe um, you know uh, you like to um, meet people for networking. For um, um, you're a computer. Um, uh, you have a computer gig going on or you want to do Tupperware or whatsoever, or makeup, Mary Kay, um, those are side hustles. Uh, um, Avon, those are side hustles as well. So, um, you know, and a lot of people, they do side hustles because um, um, they they feel like they, they enjoy doing it, number one. Number two is for money. You know, um, when we were growing up, um, I don't know if your parents told you that um, life is going to be hard. Life is going to be um, tough. Um, but what they want is to finish school first. And they never say anything about, oh, after school, you don't have enough money. No parents say that, right? So a lot of people would say, a lot of parents would say, finish school. Um, and after that, you know, figure out what you wanted to do. Or, um, you know, in, in, in our understanding, um, when we finish school, everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to fall in its place and life is going to be perfect. Um, everything is going to be like, um, you know, a fairy tale could be, or you're going to marry someone in, in, in any particular um, order. But um, not everything happens um, the way we, um, we were told because everybody is, um, you know, they have, we have our own lives. We move, we meet other friends, we meet, um, we are, our parents um, stay in one place or could move to a different location or a different country. There's so many variables to, to our lives and um, uh, not all, um, not, not everyone or not, all of us are meant to live in one um, one kind of story. Everyone has a story to tell. So um, me growing up uh, personally, I like um, hustle, but I didn't know that's that's um, that's what you call hustle. So um, when I was in um, in um, university back in Manila, um, I always find myself um, I am always needing money. Um, I have friends who wants to go out, you know, I want to be able to enjoy or have time with them or wanted to buy extra stuff for myself or, or for my family, birthday coming up. So um, what I did was um, I learned how to uh, sew. So I started sewing um, and um, I made those quilted bags um, with the um, matching um, wallets and scrunchie for the hair. So I would sell that to a lot of my friends in school. Um, so I have extra cash. So, um, but during that time, it's it's not a hustle. It's kind of like, you know, um, you're struggling for money and you wanted um, to um, to find a solution to, um, you know, to your uh, growing problem, I guess. And um, yeah, so, you know, the more we live, the more we need something. And that's kind of like the fact of a matter um, when we um, try to um, 
you know, we when we meet friends, we meet um, other people, and we we have wants, right? Um, that is kind of like a, a bi biological um, need that um, we are, you know, we we needed um, to go out. We need um, we need to buy stuff, and you know, we see something that we wanted. We wanted to be able to buy something nice for ourselves and for the people that we love. So we work for it. But until then, um, you know, you need to finish school and that's what we were told, right? So, um, and after that, um, I could not remember, but um, I went to Canada and the only thing I can do that time is not a lot because I went to this program called, um, my, my great aunt helped me to come to Canada and to become a, um, live-in caregiver so back in the 90s live-in caregiver can do nothing um they can they can only work for the same employer they could not attend post-secondary or to continue school but you can attend like mini courses um during nights night schools are we are allowed um but we also can't do um side hustles like um you know uh like work for other people as a part-time or part-time job. So um, we call it, um, back in the day, we call it under the table. If you're planning to work with someone um, that is, um, that they're gonna pay you cash. So I did that for a while so I can have extra money. And, um, you know, until then I still didn't know that that's called a hustle. And then um, I, um, when, when I started my family, um, then, you know, it came to me that I really needed something. So at that time, I was already an immigrant and um, a citizen um, in Canada. So I did was, um, okay, I was an eBay seller. I was a five-star eBay seller. Um, I started selling um, stuff that we don't need anymore because back in the day eBay was big right that was kind of like boom and then PayPal and stuff like that so um, my kids were still um, little at that time so my um, my uh, my customers are the same mothers like me so I was able to engage with same um, parents like me that we have small children because we they would they would sell something that um I, I would buy something that i don't have so let's say i would buy those baby bumpers for two dollars those were the amount of money those are the, the the prices before baby bumpers coming from the states i would pay like five dollars for shipping and then the cost of the baby bumper for the crib is two dollars how great is that and then sometimes um, um parents would sell um outgrown um clothing and they would sell it for a dollar each or they could even sell it for um a lot so maybe like maybe 15 pairs of um uh, apparel for kids um boys and girls uh, maybe they'll sell it to you for 10 bucks and then they will charge you 10 dollars shipping so um a lot of things were used so instead of us going to a consignment and stuff like that um we started um I started doing eBay. So even for my husband, I would ask him if there's some stuff that he doesn't need anymore for, for the car, because we change, you know, as, as, the, as the kids grow up, um, we don't need a sports car anymore. We, we upgraded to a, um, um, a van for me uh, to a minivan. And because I had three, I have, I have three children. So there's some accessories that we don't need anymore. And then I would post it and then it's a bidding. So most of you, like uh, eBay is still out there. And, and I'm sure that a lot of you are very um, uh, familiar to eBay, right? So, but anyway, eBay also charges 30% um, of the um, the last price. And there's also 30 cents for selling, for selling cost or selling charge um so it's it's not a lot right um but you need to pay for those services that ebay was um able to um, advertise for you so um ebay could be bidding it could be a uh, buy now um so you know and some people they go there um uh, they have a store and then they will start selling what they sell in their store just to advertise that's a very um small cost 
uh, for advertising during that time. That is back in the um, uh, late 90s, right? So we even sold like tires, um, rims for, um, for a sports car that we used to own. And um, yeah, I was big that time. I was like, um, I was a five-star seller and we, we are very, very religious when it comes to reviews of our product. And we try to really um, tell our um, tell the you know if there's any defect or whatsoever if it's okay you know pe uh, people still buy them. So um, that was a very good um, e-commerce that time, right? So that is also a, a form of a side hustle. So um, but afterwards, um, you know, in I think it's this is a very common thing that. Um, you know, something will come up really nice and some, some people are really going to be like cooperative and people are going to be um, participating in all this stuff and, you know, um, supporting you. But there's other people who are so negative that make, they will ruin it for you. So they're going to do some crazy stuff like they're going to they're going to uh, play around with the shipping. They will charge more or they won't um, they won't even deliver the, the stuff that you ordered. And they would say that they they did so now it became like a hustle for shipping so people pay extra for shipping now so now the cost could be uh used to be five dollars now the cost could be like eight bucks because you're gonna pay for tracking and for insurance and stuff like that so i think you know human nature they tend to really um ruin it for other people um when they find out that they can right so um what else did i do um i don't do a lot of garage sales only because you know it's um i find it easier for me to engage with people online right when i found out what i can do online i stick to it then um oh i did a consignment for children's clothing so there's this a big chain of um of a store um, for um, used clothing for children. And um, I did that for so many years. So um, what I did was um, because we um, we are just by ourselves as parents, like me and my husband, um, we don't have a lot of help from our families because our families could be abroad or somewhere else. Um, so what I did was um, since um, I wasn't working then, and money is, um, we don't have a lot of money to spend for our children. We have three. So what I did was I go to stores like Gap or uh, Gymboree, or I go to those, um, go to Macy's, or I would go to Nordstrom, and I would go to the sale rack. So going to the sale rack means it could be 90% off of a very nice top or jeans or could be a jacket or sweater or things like that for children. And um, um, I, I buy a lot of those. And I, I don't buy anything regular, but a lot of them are still very nice. And, and especially during back in the um, late 90s, a lot of the stuff are, are just surpluses from the store that they just want to get rid of because their new, um, their new stocks are coming and the new um, design, new display um, is going to change. So they just want to put it out there for people to buy so that they can have room in, the, in their store. So after that, what I, so what I do is like I let my children wear it, and because I'm a stay-at-home mom, I can take care of those um, uh, clothing. So um, I make sure that there's no rips, no stains, and they smell really nice. So we go to the states a lot, and I would box all of them. So I would wash them, make it nice and clean, you know, uh, remove the ones with the stain and stuff like that. So. Um, and then I would bring this to this chain um, of um, uh, children's clothing and things like um, also um, anything that is um, used by children, like cribs, like um, stroller, shoes, um, anything that um, we don't need anymore. So I would box them. And then uh, when we go to the States, I'll bring it, bring it to them and then I leave it. And then come back in 20 minutes or so, then I get my cash money. So I get cash right there um, the same day. 
So I did that for so many years. And then now I have extra money and then buy again new clothes for the kids. But I really, like 99.9%, .9 I don't buy um, uh, regular uh, price clothing for my kids. But they are so nice. And they are all like um, well-made and designers. Um, and um, I did it for so many years. And then... Um, after that, you know, kind of, kind of grew out of it because your children grows. And um, I did start cooking. And, um, and that was the time I started working. And I worked for an insurance company. And, um, you know, when, the, when you work for a big company, they are, um, you know, you, you own the home. The, I mean, not the, the company that you work for owns the building. So um, through the course of time, I was able to... Um, to to show my uh, my talent that I know how to make things um, and then I made um, spring rolls okay so when I made some spring rolls I had so many people who liked it and what I do is every every day that I come and deliver um, spring rolls which is also the early morning when I come to work um, I put and name the spring rolls and put on the freezer um, and uh, for every single floors and then i email them each one of them and i tell them that their spring rolls are ready to be picked up in the freezer and then they kind of like send me the money um by um either they go to my desk or they send it to me um by um uh inter office right so uh yeah it's kind of like a long journey to where i am right now so and then I started also baking. The last last three years, three years ago when I started baking, I started baking um, custard cake. That is already here in Edmonton when we moved here because I really needed to find something to do um, to um, make extra money. So at that time, I already know I'm hustling for money. <laughs> so um, and um, I also build. Um, I also build like a. Um, uh, uh, a few like a well a good amount of people that um, always buys and orders so um, I have a clientele that loves Filipino food and then you know sometimes um, you know birthdays um, baptism or anything any any occasions um, they would come and tell me that they have something uh, happening and then they would um, order ahead of time so um yeah so i did so much um i did so much hustle um getting to this point um with my online business and i don't think i don't think i will ever do any more hustle because i'm on my 50s i'm ready to re i'm 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 halfway there like i mean i i am retired right now so uh, my my company retired me uh, last year in February, right before um, the pandemic, which is, um, it came to me like, you know, thankfully that I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm very thankful that um, I joined this online business because had I not joined, um, I would, I don't know what to do because I couldn't find a job because it's pandemic. Everybody's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, everybody's um, told to stay home and um, how are we going to live, right? So, you know, it comes down to hustle is something that, you know, you you enjoy to do and that you are going to benefit from it, right? But a lot of people, this is, this is kind of very sad because a lot of people find hustle as um, a negative thing and they always have their mindset that you're trying to scam them or you're trying to get them right um not not particularly um about them but you know you're trying to make ends meet you're trying to find a way how you can make money for your family in a clean way in a good way in an honest way you know um that you're not um violating um orders or not you're not violating any any rules or any or the law uh, mainly so i don't know why people would always think that um side hustle is um is a scam you know so 
only the, the only difference these days of um, side hustle is everybody goes online these days because there's no other way because you can't be walking around you know like you, you, it's it's not it's not the old way where you can you can make a demo go to every any somebody's house and then um, have a you know Tupperware party or stuff like that that's kind of change you know that that um that landscape of um customer um relation is it has changed over the years everything now is done online everything is digital people have moved to the digital world um a couple of years ago and um, and people are still thinking that that's not an honest way to live. Honestly, it's wrong. It's it's it is not reasonable, and it's kind of like very rude to say that you know um, you have to wake up from this change. This change that we have now is um, it is going to be a normal way of living. This is going to be something that we have to um to to you know to live by because um it, it, the world is not like it's not the same as 10 years ago so um for example yesterday i have a very short ad that went on facebook and um you know i have my i have my picture from my cover and it says start your own online business you know me and my husband were there and i have a, a laptop with me and there's a writing in the middle and then someone said that you know um you guys should go to jail so um and i went he goes like i wonder why you guys are still um doing fooling people openly and um, scamming people so you know what enough is enough i used to just delete them but um at this point I feel like I need to answer them now. And what I said was, um, you know, if you are accusing us of doing something that you think we are doing, um, I don't think it's right to say that because um, we are we are legitimate and we are doing this honestly. And Facebook knows about this, you know, YouTube knows about this, and um, and we're not the only one. So, but for for the life of me, a lot of people would come out and say, um, you know, straightforward to you, and that's all they're gonna say though, that you're a scam, you're a scam, you're a scam, you're a scam. Actually, you know what? You have, people has to stop doing that. People has to open up their mind because apparently we live in a different world now, and you have to wake up and you have to look around you. Look at what other people are doing. People are not, um, people are not um, doing what they used to be doing. Even they're working. Their their work was um, was discontinued, and um, a lot of people are working from home now. You know, and um, seeing an ad somewhere does not make you a scam. And a lot of people think that when they see an ad is a scam. You know. Um, one thing I would like to tell you is what I'm doing is attraction marketing. So basically attraction marketing is um, telling people what else they can do. I'm giving them inspiration because, you know, you need ideas, what to do, working from home. Um, other people think that you need to be employed still to be working from home, um, to be employed by someone and give you a computer, give you all this um um, technology so that you can you can follow up with your clients and stuff like that there's another way to make a legitimate legitimate money these days and not everything that you're gonna see online is a scam and people has to stop saying that and they need to open up their mind because you know 10 years from now you will see that um, everything will be flipped everything will be changed everything will not be acceptable to some people but you know um you need to strive to this this uh this new economy this new landscape of where we are and how we do um uh, how we make money these days and um open up your mind so 
when I watch the webinar the first time, where I always say, you know, come watch the webinar, invite people, it's, uh, it's free to watch. That's where I opened up my mind. The first time I saw this webinar and I saw there's a whole lot of people. There's so much people um, around the world um, who are willing to listen to um, what we have to offer. I opened up my mind quickly and I said, oh my God, you know, I did not know about this. And I thought it's going to be like a web learning, like, you know, a teacher there, I'm um, trying to teach you something, you know, try to write down something. Um, it was not that at all. It's kind of like more of like this and inspiring you, telling you that, you know, there's a new world out there. There's a new way of making money. There's a new way of living and it's honest there's no it, there's no violation it's legitimate and it's uh it's acceptable it is fun to do and the best thing is you can take back the time that you used to um give to your employer and you know you work 24 hours a day and still give the money to someone right how does it make you feel you know um for example i was one time at the pharmacy and um I was checking out my my prescription and someone was really getting angry at Walmart and say that, oh my gosh, you know, I'm working so hard. I work so hard. I get my deduction every single um, two weeks and yet I still need to pay for my prescription, you know? So what he meant was he's already paying his premium from his work. They take out the deduction and um, when he goes to the pharmacy, he still pays for um, a copay or something or whatever, or and still pays for part of the um, the the prescription. So what he's expecting is saying what he's saying is that you know if I'm paying fifty dollars um, every two weeks, that's kind of like one hundred dollars, and if I'm only getting paid um, fifteen dollars an hour, it's kind of like you know with all these taxes and everything, it's kind of like I have given you one day of my my pay. And still pay extra when I get there to pick up my, my prescription. So, you know, a lot of people are waking up to these things that um, there's not enough money to go around in their family. And that's why they're trying to find another way to uh, to make money and to make a living. So, you know, um, I, I just really think that, you know, people should be um, not quick to judge other people on how are they doing things these days. Placing an ad does not mean it's um, it's illegal or it's a violation. It's just simply an ad, you know? And if you don't wanna listen to the ad or if you don't want to uh, participate in this, um, in this online business, well, by all means, you know, um, just move on, right? So, you know, it's a little, um, it's a little uh, um, um, frustrating how people react to a lot of things these days but anyway um on the other on the flip side some people i'm, I'm going to talk about the negativity now that other people are also um trying to ruin it for other people so let's say you know you have a nice thing going on and then um something someone will come along and they will just kind of like put a little um touch of their own personal agenda and then kind of ruin it for others and it's just uh not fair so but there's always a risk okay at the end of this there's a risk that we um we partake into everything so um however if you don't play that risk you would never know right so just be vigilant and just be um kind also um and um, in the process, you will understand um, how the world works these days. Okay, so anyway, I won't take too much more of your time. I just wanted to, you know, state um, uh, a lot of stuff that, you know, how did we end up being in here and what are the side hustles that we we can do? Um, what are the things that, um, you know, that is out there that uh, maybe you haven't checked out? So if you haven't done so, so please check us out. And I have other videos in YouTube and on my page. Uh, please follow and subscribe and like. 
you know so um you know i always need to um grow and um you know, get some more audience and stuff like that so if i have given you some values um today or um the next videos i have or the past videos please um you know um subscribe and um don't be shy just message me if you want to reach out and um i'd be very glad to um respond back okay so have a great day guys happy wednesday and tomorrow we have a live webinar um just um uh, follow on my um my pages and on my website and um or my youtube channel and um, you will find the link to my webinar and it starts at five o'clock p.m pst or eight o'clock est and um i'm telling you um there's a lot of um, real life experiences that you will hear first time um here in this webinar okay so um have a great day guys and i hope to see you very soon um in the inside and i'm excited 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 to mentor new people and um also um, i will be your coach uh, moving forward if you want to join the business and um yep so expect life dramas only better okay so have a great day guys and um see you guys around thanks for watching